Hey everybody, welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm Susan and this is Jim and we're so happy that you would join us today. We're going to be talking to you. This is going to be our last one in our longest series ever. It was Redemption and today we're going to do number eight. Number eight, that's right. Actually, that's the number of beginnings. Maybe we should start over. <laughs> no, we won't do that. Okay, so anyway, uh, we wanted to talk to you first of all about becoming a partner with us. Some of you may not know, but we've had our television ministry for 19, 19 years. 19 years. And anyway, we want to invite you to come alongside and help us. Because we, you know, the times that we're living in, they're all, they've always been uncertain. But I believe you would agree with me that 2020 proved out to be maybe perhaps the most uncertain year of your life ever. And so anyway, we'd like to expand our ministry. That's right. So, right now, our program is available in Louisiana, Arkansas, and Missouri. Right. And so, we'd like to move beyond that. So, anyway, of course, this takes money. And so, we're just saying, if you would like to join us and help us, we would be thrilled. And I want you to tell us what happens when you do that. Well, the, the Bible declares that, you know, the, there was a time when David... Uh, was getting ready to go to battle, and, and some of the men were just, they were worn out, and they just mm -hmm. said, we can't go. So the other ones, they went out, and they won the victory, and they brought the spoils back. And so David began giving the spoils to everybody, and the, the ones that went to battle said, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, we did, you know, and, and David said, those that stayed here guarding the stuff are just as entitled to the spoils mm -hmm as those who went out and did the battle. So mm -hmm. that means that like, if you send us to do the television ministry, whatever we accomplish, you get credit for it just like we do. Right. And that's that's really good. That's right. That's really so, good. You know. Yeah. Okay. So redemption. Redemption. Okay. What exactly is redemption? Well, redemption means that you were brought from one place to another. Mm -hmm. And we know that, uh, you know, and, and I think we've stated this on every program. Mm -hmm. We don't understand the new birth because we don't understand creation. We, do, um. we, do, we, don't, we don't understand when God created Adam and Eve mm -hmm. what his purpose was. His purpose was to have a person that he could just come and fellowship with, just talk to him. Mm -hmm. Wow, think about that. Yeah. And, 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 and here's the thing about it. We know that, that God created the heavens and the earth, the, the stars, the, the animals, every, everything, okay? Yeah. And he made this garden, this beautiful garden. You and I can only imagine the beauty that was found in the garden. Of I know, yeah. And so then, after he had made everything, he breathed life. He breathed life into Adam. Mm -hmm. But see, the Bible talks about the fact that, that God uh, uh, created all the animals and everything, but it says he breathed life into Adam. He didn't create him. He breathed life into him. Mm -hmm. In other words, he breathed part of himself That's right. into Adam. And, and the good news is everything that Adam would ever need was already in the, in garden. the garden. It was what, all there. God didn't have to say, oh, you know, I forgot to do that. So, or, oh, I bet Adam's going to need it. I'm, I need to do it. No, no, it was already there. Mm -hmm. And so what we've been saying is that's just like the new birth. And this little book will tell you about it. We'll send it to you if you'd like to have one. The new birth is when a person gets born, born again. again. Born again. Okay, and now what happens is we believe that when that happens to you, that God puts in you. Everything. Everything you will ever need. You will ever need. And you say, I know you're. Some of you are sitting there thinking, Well, I'm going to need a house. I'm going to need a car. It's there. How in the world <laughs> is God going to put that on the inside of me? Well, let me just ask you something. When God said, "Light be," where was the light? Where did it come from? Mm -hmm. It came from what He. Say it. From what he said. And every, every place there in Genesis chapter 1 says, and God said. And whatever he said is what happened. So every, all of that, everything that God created was on the inside of him. Mm -hmm. 
right? Yeah, yeah. And so it's, it's the same with you and I. Yeah, so that's the way it is. It's, it's, it's already on. When, when God, see, the Bible, Jesus said, Jesus says the kingdom is within. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the kingdom of God is within us. Mm -hmm. And everything that we will ever need, he's already supplied. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a process it is. through your lifetime of learning how to move into the things that he's That's exactly prepared right. for yes. you. Yes. Okay, but anyway, now do we want to offer, maybe we should pray now, or do you want to wait a bit? Whatever you want to do. Maybe we should wait a bit. Okay. Maybe we need to do a little bit more before that. Okay, so redemption today. On our last program, we talked a lot about Abraham. Abraham. And so he is such a, you know, so symbolic. I mean, he's, he's the father of faith. You know, and, and, you know, you hear people say, you know, he kept hoping when there was no reason to hope. And he was called the friend of God. And he was called the friend of God. I mean, he's like an amazing person to study in the Bible. And so we're going to go to the book of Romans, and we're just going to bring out a few more things about him because when we looked at his life, we saw where God made a covenant with him. Yes. And in our last program, we talked a lot about the meaning of that covenant. Yes. And, you know... If you didn't happen to see the last drop, you can go to our YouTube channel. That's right. And you can watch it. Or you can even go to VTN. They've got all our programs there for lots of time. Right. Even years back, you can go see them. Okay, so anyway, the Faith of Abraham is the subtitle in uh, Romans chapter 4. And I'm just going to read the, the first two verse, the first verse, okay. because this is incredible right here. Okay. Okay, it says, Abraham was, humanly speaking, the founder of our Jewish nation. What did he discover about being made right with God? What did he discover about that, Jim? What did he discover about that? Yeah. Well, here's what God said in Genesis 17, 7, uh -huh. talking to Abraham. Uh -huh. He said, And I will establish my covenant between me and you uh -huh. and your descendants after you in their generation for an everlasting covenant to be a God to you and your descendants after you. Now, when he said here, everlasting covenant. Everlasting. That means that it's still in place. That's right. That's right. So you can enter into this covenant Absolutely. if you have not already. That's right. Okay, so anyhow, when you keep reading here, and he, and he said the question was, what did he discover about being made mm -hmm. right with God? And it's so simple. It said, if his good deeds had made him acceptable to God... He would have had something to boast about. But that was not God's way. For the scriptures tell us Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. faith. That's right. That's right. So covenant relationship with God is based on faith. That's right. That's what it's That's all right. about. Okay, so, okay, then if we go on, do you want to talk about faith right here? Well, faith is good. And here's the thing about faith. It's not something you have to work up. It's something that God gave you. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, Romans chapter 12, I believe, verse 3, I believe, or maybe verse 4, God has dealt to every man the, the measure, measure of faith. In other words, God gave you his faith, and what you, have to, what you and I have to do is develop that faith. Mm -hmm. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Mm -hmm. In other words, the, the Bible is what will develop my faith. Okay, and so, you know, we hadn't mentioned this in a while about faith is the most critical issue in your life. It is, that, there's and, you no know, doubt. That is, that is like such a, a powerful revelation to have and to know, you know, because so many times we get so caught up and so distracted by all the problems that we encounter, all the different things that are around us, you know, day and night, and, and we, and we, we latch onto them and, and treat them like they're all important when they're not. No. What's really important is your, your faith because that's how you're going to get out of all those situations. And that's how you're going to please God. Mm -hmm. The Bible says without faith, or you might say without living by faith, it is impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. You know, at the first of the year, we talked about our church it, it were writing like a little motto. And so we said, you know, faith for every situation. Yeah. And, you know, that is, you know, we need to understand that 
that we have a part to play in this, even though it is a gift from God and He gave it to us, you still have the, the, you have the privilege and opportunity to study the Word of God and see what all is really there. That's right. That's right. And it's our duty to do that. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to go on with this. So right. it's, it's by faith. Then verse 4, we're still in Romans 4. Verse 4, when people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they have earned. But people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in God who forgives sinners. David spoke of this when he described the happiness of those who are declared righteous without working for it. David, you know, David, the shepherd boy that became yes. the king, he says, oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sins are put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of sin. And y'all, that right there is something to give thanks for every day. Because there's nothing you can do about your sin. But God said he will wipe it from your record. All you have to do is look to him. Isn't that good? And it makes the past the past. That's right. You know, it's gone. You know, he wipes it. It's gone. You know, as far as the east is from the west, you know, that's how far he's removed your sin from you. Yeah. So anyhow, this is a, a really, you know, this, this Romans 4 is, is worth your time to study and to really get familiar with what all it says. Okay, so anyway, we're going to move right along here down to verse 9. Now, is this blessing only for the Jews or is it also for uncircumcised Gentiles? Well... We've been saying Abraham was counted as righteous by God because of his faith. faith. But how did this happen? Was he counted as righteous only after he was circumcised or was it before? Clearly, God accepted him before he was circumcised. Yes. So, you ain't got to do nothing is what he's saying. Yeah. It's by faith, faith. By that faith. you enter this coven. Okay, now I'm going to skip down. I'm going to skip down to, uh, this is a round verse. It's, it's the last part of verse 11. Listen to this. So Abraham is the spiritual father of those who have faith. Abraham is the spiritual, spiritual father. father of those who have faith. Isn't that good? Okay, and then it goes on, and you're counted righteous because of faith. And then verse 13, clearly God's promise to give the whole earth to Abraham and his descendants was based not on his obedience to God's law, but on a right relationship with God that comes by faith. So, you know, forget trying to be good enough. Right. Forget you, it. You can't. You can't do it. Nothing will ever work out for you like that. No. So it's all about faith. It's all about trusting the Lord and believing that what he said he will do. That's right. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. And, you know, Jesus says, said, this gospel shall be preached in all the earth. Mm -hmm. This gospel. You know, in, in Galatians chapter 1, yeah. Paul refers to, if anybody comes and brings you another, another gospel. gospel. So wait a minute. Jesus says, this gospel mm -hmm. shall be preached. What, what is... This, this gospel. gospel. This gospel is that you are saved by faith. Mm -hmm. Saved by grace through, through faith. faith. Yeah. That that not that, of yourselves. Not of yourselves, that's right. And and that and that and this gospel is the gospel of peace, the gospel of health and healing, the gospel of prosperity. The, I mean everything that you yeah. would ever want. And you know, you know, one thing you need to add to that, the gospel of forgiveness. Uh oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's because that means everything. That's right. It just does. That's right. But anyway, here, let's go over here to, you want, do you want to read some more? In, well, there's just a few more okay, I'd like to read. It. I'd like to read this one down in verse 16. So the promise is received by faith. And then I like uh, verse 16, where we talked about this earlier, Abraham is the father of all who believe. And then it talks about Abraham believed in the God who brings the dead back to life and who creates things out of nothing. And I love this one. Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham just kept hoping, believing, he would become the father of many nations. And that's a whole story in itself right there. According to what was spoken. See, he, Abraham 
believe the word. That's what he did. Now he didn't have we we have we have the written word. Yeah. He didn't have that. No, but he believed what had he been. believed what God had said, mm -hmm. which is, is is the same thing because yeah. this, this right here is what God has said, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and so he's gonna make him the father of many nations. Okay, remember. He didn't even accept the call from God until he was 75. Right. Well, God didn't go and do it. Okay. 75. I mean, what? Yeah. God likes old folks. Right. I'm thrilled with this. <laughs> okay. So, so there he is. And then, and then he tells him he's going to make him the father of many nations. Yeah. And then he told him, he says, look, if you could count the stars or the grains of sand, that's how many your descendants will yeah. be. We are in that family. Well, I'm, I'm in that group. We're in that family. I'm in the group. Okay, but Abraham, it just said it just said that there was no reason for hope. You know why? Because he was so old. What was he? A hundred when it he finally did when happen. It happened, when right. he had Isaac, yeah. his first his first born, he was one hundred. Yeah. Okay, so he he had no reason to hope, but he just kept hoping, believing God that he would become the father of many nations because God had said to him, that's how many descendants you will have. Isn't that amazing? Look at that. That's right. And Abraham's faith did not weaken even though at about 100 years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead and so was Sarah's womb. Never wavered in believing God's promise. You know, so I, I, like wow. to, I like to think about it like this. Has God made you a promise. That's right. If he has, you hold fast your confession of faith and it will come to pass. Mm -hmm. You know, Jim, when you think about, you know, there's, I, I love the stories about Joseph. Yeah. You know, because, you know, this boy had these dreams and y'all, he's only 17. Right. And he is a descendant of Abraham. And, he, and his brothers were so mean to him, they were going to kill him. Yeah. And they sold him to these slaves to be a slave in Egypt. And so, anyway, nevertheless, before all that happened, he had had all these dreams. And in his dreams, he had seen all his brothers bowing down to him. Mm -hmm. He had seen his mom and dad bowing down to him. And it wasn't like, I don't think he actually thought, man, I can't wait till they worship me. I don't think it was that no. way at all. I think he just, I think he was just like, enamored with the thought that, you know, my family's going to, they're going to accept me mm -hmm. because his brothers hated him. And so, and it all came to pass. It was years and years and years, but the promise was good, you know. The promise never quit. And, you know, you, can, you can't imagine and we can't know how he felt that day when he topped the hill and he saw Egypt, this little country boy who had never seen anything. People didn't travel then like no. they do now. And so he's seen all this for the first time, and there he is in the right smack in the middle of it and becomes first in command to the Pharaoh. That's right. Wow. That's right. I mean, you know. In, in okay, and that was by faith. It was. I mean. I'm just it, saying. Uh, yeah. uh, Joseph never lost his faith in God. I have personal testimony I'll give. Okay, give one. I graduated from pharmacy school in 1969, mm -hmm. and I had a desire. Mm -hmm. My desire was to own a pharmacy in a small town. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you know, years went by. In fact, I, I uh, had one, but it wasn't in a small town. Sold mm -hmm. it, and this, that, and the other, and continued to work. Mm -hmm. In February of 1994, which was basically 25 years later, mm -hmm. I opened a pharmacy in a small town, mm -hmm. and I kept it. For 25 Five years. years, yeah. Now, isn't that amazing? It is. But I mean, you know, uh, um, I had almost given up on my mm -hmm. hope to, mm -hmm. for that to happen. But but there was, I'm telling you, listen, God is faithful. He is. He's faithful. He I mean, it's just. Keeps his promises. It is amazing to me that, that you know, he said, he said, he said, I am the Lord God. I change not. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. I will not alter the word that has come out of my mouth. Wow. Yeah. So you can, whatever he said, take it to the bank. That's right. You know, for, I, just stop and think about this. Okay. Okay. He, he, he said this, that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
so that has happened literally millions, probably billions of times. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, and if the devil could stop anything, he, he would, would stop, stop that. that. Yeah. But, he, but he can't. Because if you as an individual will believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and kiss, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. And that's exactly how you got saved. There's, that cannot be stopped. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the same way with any other promise that God has made. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about that one for just a minute and let's pray okay. for people to be born again because when you do that, you step out of darkness and into light. Absolutely. You have absolutely been translated from the kingdom of Satan mm -hmm. into the kingdom of God Almighty. You know, who wouldn't much rather yes. have God Almighty as your father? I mean, really. You know, he's offered this. He's, his son sacrificed his life on that cross mm -hmm. that you and I could be born again. And it's, and it's not hard, and it's not by anything that you can nope. work up. It's just like what you said. Nope. Believe, right. in your heart Believe in your heart and yep. say it with your mouth. That's right. Okay, so if, if you're watching today and maybe, maybe you've never done it, or maybe you have maybe in the past, but you can't, you're just not clear we want you to pray this prayer with us today, okay? So just follow me. Say, Dear God in heaven. Dear God in heaven. I just heard about Jesus. I heard about Jesus. And I do believe he died for me. And I do believe he died for me. And I'm saying today. And I'm saying today. Jesus. Jesus. You are the Christ. You are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. You are the son of the living God. And I believe right now. And I believe right now. That you make your home. That you make your home. In my heart. In my heart. And you move me out of darkness. And you move me out of darkness. Into light. Into light. And I Thank you, Father, and in I Jesus' thank you, Father, name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. All right. So, so if you prayed that prayer with us, right? I have a little book. It's written by Kenneth E. Hagen. It's called The New Birth. Mm -hmm. If you prayed that prayer with us, if you'll contact us, we'll send this to you. Yeah, and it'll Absolutely just, help, free it'll just help you to kind of see, you know, what did happen to me then. Because right. things changed. Everything shifted. Everything, Everything in your life just changed. It did. And, and you'll, you'll be aware of it but you don't really understand it. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so we were talking about something here. We, we were talking about Abraham and covenant. Okay. Covenant. okay. And we know that, that uh, God's people went to Egypt, and they mm -hmm. were there 400 years. And this, this is an interesting thing to me. You see, uh, a very interesting thing. In, in Exodus chapter 1, verse 8. Okay. It says, now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Now, did you hear what he just said? I did. He I said, There's that. more of them than there is of us, and they are stronger yeah, than we are. Yeah, that's what he said. He said, Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply, and it happen in the event of war, that they also join our enemies and fight against us, and so go up out of the land. Now isn't that interesting? He says these people from Israel, there's more of them than there is of us and they're stronger than we are. Yet they put them in bondage and slavery. See, here's the thing. And these are the people that caused them to have great wealth. That's right. That's right. So here's the thing. As a believer, mm -hmm. as a believer, you are stronger and mightier than the devil. Mm -hmm. You have authority. That's right. In the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. That's right. And so we, we need to understand. See, we think that, that uh, I've heard people talk about how powerful the devil is. Well, he's not. He's defeated. He's defeated. He's defeated. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, the Bible says in Colossians, that Jesus made a show of him openly, triumphing over him in it. Disarmed. He disarmed him. <laughs> And I mean, right. he, so, so the, the <clears throat> devil cannot do anything to you. He can only make suggestions to you mm -hmm. and you follow his suggestions. That's right. And now he's a master he's at that. He's a master at that. There's no doubt. Yeah. And so, but, you know, we have, we have the word of God to help us recognize when these things come our way. Yeah. You know, in, in uh, Corinthians, it talks about how 
You need to learn how to cast down imaginations and high things that exalt themselves yes. against the knowledge of God. And I know one, one reference about the devil himself is that he's the accuser of the brethren. Yes, and so whenever you've got that going on and you're, it, I, you know how it is. I do. I mean, he will just come and torment you. Yes. And when that's going on, you just need to just stop and go to Ephesians 6. Think about the whole armor of God mm -hmm. and get that belt of truth out. That's right which is the Word of God. Yes, it is. Get it out. And you get the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You put on that helmet of salvation, which, I mean, think about it, helmet. Protects your head. Protects, protects your, your thoughts. Yeah, there you are, right there. Do that. And, you know, and then you put those gospel shoes on. Peace comes, you know, when you do that. And you do those things and, and recognize... You know, these are not my thoughts. This is this is a conversation I'm hearing from somewhere else, and I'm not uh, gonna right. have it. That's exactly Just right. stop it like that. Say no. Say no. I'm not happening today. In Jesus' name, no. Right. All right. Well, we want to remind you about partnering with us. Uh, I believe the information is on the screen there. You can text it. Uh, I don't remember exactly what it is. Well, it can, doesn't matter. Or you can it's make there. it. All that information is on mm -hmm. the screen, and uh, as you partner with us. We, you can rest assured that we will pray for you each and every day. That's you will, right. You will be, your name will be on our prayer list. That's right. And we trust that our name will be on your prayer that's list. That's right. Because that's Absolutely. what partnership is all about, helping one another, mm -hmm. helping someone to accomplish the goal mm -hmm. that God has given them. So we would ask that you would just uh, consider, ask God what he would have you to do. Mm -hmm. you know, if he doesn't tell you to do anything, then don't worry about it. Don't do it. But if he speaks to you, about partnering with us, we would love mm -hmm. to have you as a partner. That's right. That's right. right. That's right. All right. Remember, if you have prayer requests, you can contact us here. We would love to pray for you. We can hook up with people that know how to pray. Mm -hmm. Isn't that true? That's so right. So we can pray for you, and we believe that God answers prayer. Mm -hmm. And remember this. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you should know the truth, and, and the, the truth, truth will set you free. free.